Hey, good evening. Welcome back to my little gardening show. Um, what you're about to see is a compilation of the last two days of uh, putting in about half the garden. We had about, you know, probably over half of it planted in, but we hadn't done any of the warm weather stuff. So basically took care of the tomatoes, the peppers, um, the cucumbers over the past two days and built some new structures. But we spent quite a bit of time at it. Well, Dad's house and everybody's kind of beat. Definitely got a lot of sun. And, uh, but exciting times. My brother is in from Boston um, visiting us. He normally comes in about twice a year. Once in uh, around Christmas time and once in the summer. Uh, this time he, he mixed up and came in the spring. Uh, came Memorial Day weekend this weekend. So got to be part of the planting. We had the cousins over. That was kind of a new thing. Uh, for us and for them to be able to be a part of the planting uh, putting the garden in and then uh, today we've got uh, Some more kids that are with us uh, some friends who we were kind of the backup plan for if they were to If she were to go into labor and she did so um, we got three more kids with us that are probably with us the rest of the weekend along with my brother um, so we're gonna have a good old times just a lot of fun uh, it's such a blessing to be in a position to uh, to give to others at this point and to entertain and um, just serve, uh, bless other people. You know, there's been years when we've not been in a position to do that, when instead of being in a position to give and to serve, um, on the flip side of having to receive and, you know, being kind of in a humble state. So just real grateful that we have an opportunity this kind of season where we've been able to bless other people and just do things for others. Um, so good stuff so anyway I hope you enjoy the uh, little compilation here I put together for you uh, probably make some more videos there's just a lot you know a lot we could talk about and uh, share so we'll see what we can do but uh, hope you enjoy this this video well good morning welcome back to my little gardening show today's planting day so just woke up Uncle Kevin <laughs> He's going to get ready, and then uh, we're going to head out to the garden after he has breakfast and all that. Fun times. <laughs> all right, so it's a big day. We're out at the garden. Uh, part of us are. My wife, the rest of the kids, Uncle Kevin, they are coming. I've got my sister Sharon with me. And what are you doing, Sharon? Cutting the leaves at the bottom of the tomatoes. You're prepping the tomatoes. And uh, what she's doing, she's taking off the bottom three leaves with the little pruners we got so that... We can plant these about a foot deep. So my next step is to, while she's doing it, she's prepping all the plants for us. The next step is to um, prep the ground. So I'm gonna get the uh, tiller out. I got some flagum moss. We're gonna kind of till in with that to loosen thing, loosen things up, and uh, help retain a little moisture. I'm gonna go from there. All right. So we've got our uh, beds broken up here. Um, yeah, Aunt Sharon and some of the kids dropping in the flag and moss because we want to try to improve the tilth uh, in the interim and water retention so we don't have to water as much. They're working, they're going to be working that into the, uh, the beds. We got our tomato rows down. So, um, after I apply the garden lime and the uh, mint lighter pre plant mix, um, We'll mix that into the, the ground. I'll probably run the tiller down all the rows one more time to mix it in. And then we'll put our weed barrier fabric down. And then we'll cut our holes where we want to plant, at least for the tomatoes. And we're going to plant them about a foot, foot down um, into the ground. And then kind of go from there. So I need to get the other wheelbarrow. All right, so um, your pan over here. We've got a work crew that's uh, mending the areas where we're going to plant the tomatoes. And then what we're going to do, bud, is we're going to mix up some of this mitt lighter. Where, what do we use for it? This is the, uh, the mineral mix that has all the minerals that the plants need to thrive. And the whole idea with the mitt lighter gardening method is that you want to uh, eliminate any of the deficiencies uh, by making sure all the, plant, the plants have everything they need. So what we're going to do...
Got the mineral packets that had, uh, comes two in a pack. I think this is around 13 bucks, something like that. I got this online last year. 10 ounces of this, 25 pound bag of this. That's triple 15. Whoop. It's got different stuff in it. And uh, four pounds of Epsom salt. Is that right here? The Epsom salt is right there, but we're not gonna mix the Epsom salt right now because we don't want the thing to get soupy. The Epsom salt draws moisture into the, the uh, fertilizer and mineral mix. We don't want that because we want to be able to store this and use it as we need it. Once a week we apply this stuff. The mineral packets used to be um, uh, like the uh, pellets like this, but they wised up and made it a powder so it, you can mix it better. So we're going to grab a bag of this. Come over to, to our wheelbarrow here. Alright, so we're going to dump this out. Twenty-five pound bag of this was like um, I think like eleven dollars. wasn't too expensive, and this will last for really uh, a couple, probably almost two months. Are you gonna put that in the mix? Yeah, here's the mineral packet. So we're gonna sprinkle this in just over the. Does that give it nutrients? Yeah, these are the micro minerals, all the trace element elements. The idea is that there's sixteen elements that they're aware of that plants need to grow. Three of them are from the air. Uh, the other 13 are minerals. And so this is what we provide as the minerals. So you want to mix it real well? Yeah, so I've got a glove here. We're mixing this up. What if you did it without a glove? Well, you could if you want to make sure you wash your hands. You know, before you eat or anything like that. Alright, so that's mixed up pretty good. That will store, it won't get soupy. And then like I said, we mix this up in about a gallon and a half container at a time with about a quarter cup of Epsom salt, roughly or a handful of Epsom salt. It's not an exact science. I mean, you can be really, really precise with this, but this, it's really forgiving. Um, you don't have to be like super exact, weighing everything out on the scale. You can, it's supposed to be one ounce of this per linear foot. I do it by just taking about two tablespoons and tossing it at the base of the plant, or sprinkling it around. So anyway, this is good to go. Um, we will mix up Epsom salt on the fly with it. So the next step is, you know, we got a gallon and a half container like this. We'd fill this with the fertilizer mix and I'd put in a handful of Epsom salt, basically. So the straw is like moisture? The Epsom salt would make it soupy, but if you use it right away, it doesn't get soupy. I mean, it'll last for about a day without it getting soupy. Um, if you mix Epsom salt in with it. But before we do anything else, we're going to get the garden lime out, the stalemate lime, whatever it is. We're going to sprinkle that onto the beds. And this is our calcium source. This adds calcium to the soil, which is essential for plant growth, and it um, sweetens the soil. It um, uh, helps with the pH um, of the soil. So we'll go ahead and get going. Is this the stuff that you don't want to put on the roots? No, this is the stuff that... Um, you want to you want to put before you plant down. You want to put in your garden bed. So, all right, you go ahead and stop. So are we only doing the um, lettuce? Um, the lettuce, the radishes, and the carrots. So you can paint the camera over here, bud. We got everybody divisional labor. I got Ruthie weeding. Got Lily watering. Sis is watering. Mama's spreading some fertilizer. Aunt Sharon is spreading some. Fertilizer, Emma spreading the garden lime. Let's go over and see what we're gonna do. So, once the beds are limed in and uh, our mineral mix is down, we're gonna take the tiller through and bust things up. Now, this is a little, little uh, caveat. I don't like tilling. I mean, if it was a smaller area, I would try to do more of a no-till approach, but practically speaking, realistically speaking, it's just this is just what we're doing because it's more convenient. Um, you know, we just I guess it's all about balance, right? Long term, we are going to try to go to a more no-till approach, but for now, this is kind of the approach we're using. Well, we are planting some uh, cover crops, but then we're going back and tilling them in because it's just such a pain to the ground's got a lot of clay in it, and so it's it's hard to work. So having a machine like this really helps. 
we're gonna go ahead and um, the other thing too is since we're using the uh, mitt lighter gardening method you know the plants have the basic minerals they need we're not running a tiller through and doing like you know three four passes in it where the, the soil structure and the crumb structure that's like totally destroys the soil aggregates we're running it through twice once to break it up and another time just to mix our stuff in you know a real general pass so we're gonna they're almost to that point okay so we'll get going on this bud all right so in the midst of preparing stuff um while she's going around the potatoes fertilizing and notice the potato colorado potato beetle is back and uh they're laying eggs on the plants too so what we're gonna have to do uh, actually it's a good time to do it we're gonna go through the potato patch plant by plant we're gonna look for the beetles we're gonna squash them we're gonna you know pull back just just smear the eggs bag those are nymphs just smash them anyway we're gonna smash everything we can find um because if not they will chew these plants down fun times pest control oh and there's uncle kevin here to help and save the day <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's uh, film Uncle Kevin smashing a potato beetle. Let's see where are they at. Hmm. By the sweat of your brow, Adam. <laughs> you see anything? Mm -mm. Nothing on this one. Yeah, I'll look. All right. All right, we're making progress. Uh, all the beds are amended. I've got the uh, the kids planting the lima beans over here. Uncle Kevin's helping me with the tomato roll. We're putting a, a row of uh, weed barrier down. Uh, my wife and kids are getting ready to plant peppers. So what we're gonna do is pin this down on the end here. Um, we're gonna cut that fabric and then we're gonna roll the other side. We're gonna try to get this all covered in weed barrier to just help keep the weeds down. Because uh, they were just a pain last year. Fun times. Then the next step is once it's pinned down, we'll take the postal digger. And since that was pretty easy to tear through, I, I'm imagining the postal digger is going to tear right through it. We'll, we can test that. Yeah, fun times. Okay, we're about, what, two hours into this project. We've gotten a lot done. The lima beans are planted. The peppers are planted. We are in the midst of planting tomatoes, uh, planting a whole row of San Marzanos and then some Italian paste at the far end. We laid down this fabric and I don't know, we'll see how it performs. Hopefully it'll keep some of the weeds down. We took uh, postal diggers, we got two of them, so I broke through and they tore through the fabric. Okay, we created our holes and then my brother's coming back behind me and making sure they're about a foot deep and then throwing the dirt towards the trellis because the kids are on the other side reaching in, dropping the plants in, and then pushing the, uh, the the soil around them. Division of labor, I got Emma over here. She is trimming up the um, plants, taking off the, uh, what, what kind is that, Emma? Italian. Okay. Yeah. She's trimming up the tomatoes for me and then handing them to the kids and then the kids are bringing them in and planting them. We're planting them about a foot and a half apart on center the whole way down. We'll probably be able to get um, about 30 plants per trellis, or per like long trellis. Sauce tomatoes on this side. We're going to be doing our heirlooms, um, other heirlooms on this side. We're going to be doing like the brandywine, pink brandywine, the duster, true black brandywine. There's a new one I want to try. It's called terracotta, uh, Kellogg's breakfast. We got a couple different ones probably have one trellis per kind so like you know maybe duster pink brandy wine we might put the pinks and the blacks together and then um a trellis of kellogg's breakfast and then terracotta on one of them so all together we'll have about uh 60 maybe 70 tomatoes um plants planted in the garden this year but overall things are looking pretty good really helps to have uh the additional hands, I mean, this would take me a really long time if I was doing it by myself. You could put it in, we're just, we got so many, you're just better off throwing that away. It's okay, just be careful. Um, we also need to do some cherry tomatoes. I don't know, we got a lot. So 
so we'll uh, we'll keep planting here. Yeah. All right, so we've been here a couple hours now. Probably it's around what two, three o'clock. Two thirty, three o'clock. Uh, we made some good progress, but everybody's starting to get tired. It's like the heat of the day. Uh, I'll show you what we got going on. So we kind of went through the tomatoes here and um, did four of each variety of the uh, the heirlooms. We haven't planted any of the cherry tomatoes yet. We're actually going to make another tre trellis over here in this area, but the kids are uh, a lot more so annoying. Than they fall the kids are planting the tomatoes in. They're not quite tall enough yet to uh, guide against the trellis. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, we got enough of this cattle paneling because uh, we didn't do as many peas this year. Uh, we're going to build another tomato trellis real quick uh, to plant all of our cherry tomatoes. We're going to keep them separate this year from the, uh, the bigger ones and the sauce tomatoes. Should work out pretty well. So we've got a couple of uh, heavy duty po T posts. Um, I'll get those and then we'll we'll strap these up. Should work out pretty good. All right, so we've been out here since about 10, 10:30, 10 and it's around four o'clock. We got a lot done. Yeah, what are you guys working on? Uh, we're finishing up the tomatoes. Yeah, what okay. are you planting? Uh, is this the black cherry? Yeah, cherry tomatoes. So you guys are planting the cherry tomatoes. We got another trellis we put up real quick. We're gonna have a couple of black cherries, uh, Chadwick cherry, which is kind of like a classic um, cherry tomato. And then we got this variety from Baker Creek, blueberries and cream. Uh, my, my buddy Josh sent me that. Looks nice. What's cool is that it's blue. It's got this bluish tint. Cool. We didn't uh, break up the ground a whole lot here. Basically just took a postal digger and dug down um, about eight inches deep. Add a little garden lime. We're going to sprinkle some mint lighter. Um, Pre-plant mix or whatever it is, a mineral mix on uh, around the base of each plant and water them in and it'll be good to go. Kids, uh, rest of the kids, my wife took home. They kind of tired out and he's, my son's got a ball game later tonight so he's got to rest up and get hydrated. We've got a lot of nice uh, plants left over, about three trays of tomatoes. Um, a couple of them will be given to uh, Uncle John. And then uh, my sister's gonna take some down when she goes, um, I think to Evansville. They're going to Evansville tomorrow morning and she's gonna take some down for her friends, I think. We'll see how that turns out. Anyway, there it is. We got the peppers planted, staked. Uh, close to 60 tomatoes planted on the double trellis there. Everything else is going really well. It's kind of heat of the day right now. It's, it's looking good. Kale's ready to harvest. We need to pick some kale. Our broccoli's looking real good. Rhubarb is kind of a disaster. And my son take out the uh, seed stalks and he just started ripping <laughs> he pretty much ripped the tar out of the rhubarb now it'll come back uh, but it's looking pretty bad right now he didn't get all the seed stalks but this you know early spring it sends up the seed stalks and um, if you don't cut them out they go to seed like this and then when these darken up to where they they dry out and they start falling off you know they're ready to harvest you got there's tons of rhubarb seed here i still got a ton and i need i got a couple of uh people that have asked me to mail them some seed and so i need to do that uh, i'm gonna do that probably next week you know it's hot it's pretty out with like how everything's laid out this year Tried to get rid of the uh, potato beetles, at least the ones we saw in the plants. We went around and squashed everything that we could find.
planted the green beans the other night. We planted lima beans today. So pretty much the garden's in. Now it's just uh, tending it, taking care of it, and then, um, you know, over the next couple months we'll be able to harvest all this stuff. You know, if the weather cooperates and everything. So the only thing we don't have planted are the uh, watermelon, cucumber, and squash. We're going to have to do that another day. We just didn't have time to get it done today. So maybe tomorrow or later this weekend, we're going to get that done. But, uh, I guess that's it for now. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye. Well, good morning. Welcome back to my little gardening show. Uh, this morning, day two, uh, planting the garden out, the, the rest of it, the warm weather stuff. We got the uh, tomatoes and peppers yesterday. Uh, today, we're going to do the cucumbers, watermelon, and squash. Try to get some stuff planted, and then we'll be kind of done. Um, we got some kale we can harvest today, uh, some lettuce, I don't know if you can see that behind me here, but um, yeah, things are looking really good, not having any issues, it's supposed to rain later this afternoon, so I'm hoping to get stuff in the ground, plant it, established, uh, and then let, let uh, nature take its course here, so uh, let's get started. Alright, so um, kids are all running around, we got some extra kids with us. Today, kids are playing tag. Uh, we are trying to figure out where we're going to put things, and what we've decided is we're going to do the cucumbers and the smaller melons. And here, the stuff that's like a little tender, that uh, maybe is not as spiny, that might be more prone to like uh, bunny rabbit attacks and all that. We're planting all that here. So I've got uh, six of our straight eight cucumbers. And then some of the Japanese cucumbers here, the Takawa. Here we've got it uh, set up to where the uh, they're playing on the inside of the cage, and the hope is that as they grow out and kind of start sprawling, that they'll grab all this cage and we can kind of train them up just a little bit. They're going to vine quite a bit, um, and that's okay. Looks like we got a kid that's crying, probably upset because she got tagged. So, um, the other thing we're doing different, I've got the broad fork instead of tilling this up since there's quite a bit of uh, ground cover on this still from the fall. I'm uh, just breaking up the soil uh, to maintain the profile and, and not stir up a bunch of weed seeds. Breaking this up and then we're coming on with the post hole digger and digging out um, the specific spots we want to plant in. This year we're doing, I'll show you what we're doing as far as the melons. As far as the melons, we're doing some smaller varieties. Uh, I've got the, it's called Tigger. We've grown that before. That's a really nice one. And then this new one called Kazakh. Um, that looked pretty good. But again, you can tell it's gonna be a smaller vining because the leaves, you know, everything about the plants are a lot smaller than say, uh, you know, Golden Hubbard squash. The other advantage to growing uh, the smaller varieties here like this is that we're gonna get fruit faster you know, same way with like the cherry tomatoes. We're probably going to get cherry tomatoes before we get any of the beef steak and sauce tomatoes. We'll have cherry tomatoes way before that. I mean, once they get another foot or so higher, they're going to start sending out fruit clusters. Same with these smaller melons. Um, they'll set fruit faster. They'll ripen faster. They don't require as many days to maturity like the uh, larger squash and like watermelon. So we're doing that. Um... I'm going to try planting watermelon. I'm not real hopeful about that because, you know, normally it takes four months or so to get anything. But we'll try a hand at it and see. Um, the larger squash, like our yellow crookneck, um, they're like bush types and all that. We're going to try this area. i got some cleaning up to do here. But we're going to plant our larger squash um, in this area here. Rhubarbs uh, is going to need some time to recover. My son kind of butchered the plants, removing the seed stalks, and <laughs> anyway, lessons learned. Well, we're all done for the day. <clears throat> we got everything planted in that we wanted to plant. Um, last thing left to put in the ground would be the squash and the watermelon, but I did get everything else in. We got our uh, cucumbers and melons, the smaller melons there. All planted in, look, looking pretty good. The rest of the garden is looking pretty awesome. Just got a little uh, 
little rain shower, which is just enough to water everything in. So we're uh, getting ready to head out for the night. So we spent uh, quite a bit of time, I mean, all together, um, several months getting this garden in, and it uh, looks like it's finally paying off. Looking forward to um, seeing how things go this year. All right, well, I guess that's it for now. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye.